We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. For every American, this has to be the proudest day of our lives. I believe that this nation should commit itself, commit itself. to achieving the goal, achieving the goal before this decade is out, of landing a man on the moon. Over half a century ago, humanity achieved an extraordinary milestone in space exploration by successfully landing on the moon. While we have celebrated NASA's accomplishment together, some aspects of the Apollo 11 mission have remained shrouded in mystery. It has taken decades to uncover the malfunctions that left the NASA astronauts momentarily stranded during the mission. What did they discover during this time? And how come Neil Armstrong has finally burst into tears saying the moon is not what we think it is? Join us as we delve into the secrets surrounding this remarkable mission and explore what SpaceX and NASA have been keeping from us. In 1999, a poll was conducted to gauge Americans' opinions on the moon landing being the greatest technological achievement in human history. Surprisingly, only 39% of respondents agreed with this statement, while the majority, 59%, did not. What's more concerning is that a significant number of people actually believed that the entire Apollo moon landing was an intricate hoax orchestrated by NASA. Those who support this conspiracy theory argue that the U.S. government staged the event to outpace the Soviet Union in the space race and gain a political advantage. They often point to alleged anomalies in the photographs, like the absence of stars or the flag appearing to ripple in the airless lunar environment as supposed evidence of a staged event. We all know that this widespread skepticism stems from a perceived lack of transparency on the part of NASA. Adding to the complexity of the situation, Neil Armstrong, a key astronaut involved in the historic mission, has made intriguing claims that the moon holds more secrets than what we have been led to believe. Armstrong suggests that the moon's nature and characteristics differ from the commonly accepted understanding. These revelations have sparked curiosity and intensified discussions, leaving us on the cusp of a potential scientific paradigm shift. But before we explore how Neil Armstrong broke down in tears while exposing the biggest secrets in space exploration, let us introduce you to a few important contexts. For centuries, the moon has captivated humanity with its natural beauty and mysteries. Long before the advent of advanced astronomical observatories and telescopes, our ancestors were fascinated by this celestial wonder. With limited equipment, they diligently observed the moon's phases, studied the duration of lunar eclipses, and wove myths and legends around its influence. They discovered that the moon controlled the tides and even had an impact on our calendars. Some even speculated about its potential effects on mental health. As technology advanced, unmanned probes like the Soviet Lunar and the American Ranger and Surveyor programs were sent to orbit the moon. These missions provided valuable information about the moon's conditions and geology. With each new discovery, the desire to send humans to the moon grew stronger. The space race between the United States and the USSR during the Cold War fueled this ambition, as it became a matter of national pride and technological superiority. In 1961, the United States launched the ambitious Apollo mission. Its goal was nothing short of sending a man to the moon and bringing him back safely before the end of the decade. This was an enormous undertaking that required substantial funding. The Apollo program involved multiple stages of development and testing. Suborbital and orbital flights, rendezvous and docking maneuvers, lunar orbiting and landing simulations, and extravehicular activities were all part of the rigorous preparations. The pinnacle of the Apollo program arrived on July 16, 1969. The world held its breath as the Apollo mission took off. On July 20th, the entire planet watched in awe as the lunar module Eagle descended onto the moon's surface. The three-man crew, consisting of Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins, had reached a lunar orbit. Armstrong and Aldrin separated from Collins, who remained behind to man the command module. 
At precisely 2.56 a.m. GMT, Armstrong took humanity's first steps on the moon, forever etching his name in history. Aldrin followed closely, and together they spent two hours gathering samples and conducting scientific experiments. After their remarkable activities, the astronauts planted the American flag on the moon, symbolizing the triumph of their mission. They then rejoined Collins in the main shuttle to begin their journey back to Earth. On July 24, 1969, the trio splashed into the Pacific Ocean, completing their historic mission. Their return was met with jubilant celebration as they embodied the audacity and determination of the human race. These brave astronauts had achieved what was once thought impossible, fulfilling the dreams of centuries and paving the way for future space explorations. Scientifically, the Apollo missions brought back valuable lunar samples. The astronauts collected approximately 382 kilograms, 842 pounds, of moon rocks and soil during their missions. These samples provided insights into the moon's geology, composition, and history. They helped confirm the hypothesis that the moon was formed from the collision of a Mars-sized object with Earth billions of years ago. By studying the moon rocks, scientists discovered that the moon's surface is primarily composed of basalt, a type of volcanic rock. The samples also revealed the presence of anorthosite, a light-colored rock rich in aluminum and calcium, suggesting differentiation processes in the moon's early history. The age of the moon rocks was determined to be around 4.5 billion years, providing crucial information about the moon's formation and the early solar system. The Apollo missions also conducted experiments and observations on the moon's surface. Astronauts deployed seismometers to measure moonquakes and recorded data on lunar seismic activity. These measurements helped scientists understand the moon's interior structure and provided insights into the distribution of mass within the moon. In addition, the Apollo missions deployed retroreflectors on the moon's surface. These devices continue to provide precise measurements of the Earth-Moon distance to this day. By bouncing laser beams off these retroreflectors, scientists can accurately calculate the Moon's orbit and monitor its slight changes over time. Another significant achievement of the Apollo mission was the establishment of scientific experiments and instruments on the Moon's surface. For example, Apollo 14 deployed the Apollo Lunar Surface Experiments Package, ALSEP, which included instruments to measure solar wind, seismic activity, and heat flow. These experiments operated for years, providing valuable data on the Moon's environment and helping scientists better understand its geophysical processes. The missions also contributed to our understanding of the Moon's history of volcanic activity. Astronauts observed numerous volcanic features such as lava channels, rails, and volcanic cones. They also discovered volcanic glass beads called orange soil, which provided evidence of explosive volcanic eruptions on the moon in the past. The Apollo program had a profound impact beyond scientific discoveries. It demonstrated the power of human perseverance, technological innovation, and international collaboration. The missions inspired generations of scientists, engineers, and explorers, and paved the way for subsequent space exploration endeavors. However, there was a lot about the Apollo 11 mission that remained concealed from the public, even as it unfolded in real time. Let's begin by delving into these undisclosed aspects before we explore what led to Neil Armstrong breaking down in tears. What really happened with the Apollo 11 mission? And what do aliens have to do with this mission? It is no news that the NASA astronauts aboard the Apollo 11 mission were left to their own devices for a few minutes due to a malfunction when they landed on the moon. NASA tried to hide this embarrassing incident for a long time. As the lunar modules approached the moon, two modules of the automatic control system failed and there were radio issues. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were left to handle the situation themselves Despite the setbacks, thanks to the exceptional skills of these two astronauts, the Eagle landing module safely touched down on the moon. The television audience, of course, remained unaware of these challenges. Officially, everything went smoothly, and Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were brimming with adrenaline after the landing. They were so excited that they decided to skip their scheduled rest period before venturing out onto the moon's surface. 
NASA secretly altered the plan, giving the audience the impression that the moon landing had proceeded without a hitch. However, it took decades for the public to learn about all the facts that had been concealed, and NASA faced heavy criticism for attempting to portray perfection. In the years following the historic moon landing, more hidden truths gradually came to light. There were claims that Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin had encountered enormous spacecraft on the moon. Naturally, the corresponding radio messages were never made public. Yet, witnesses emerged who had worked at NASA in 1969 and had personally heard these radio communications. Armstrong and Aldrin denied throughout their lives that they had witnessed anything out of the ordinary or encountered aliens on the moon. Nevertheless, these cover-ups and deceit led some to question the authenticity of the entire moon landing. People started contemplating the possibility of extraterrestrial bases on the moon and even treaties with aliens. Dr. Ken Johnston Schneer, a significant figure in this context, worked as a civilian astronaut consultant pilot with NASA during the Apollo landings. He also served with the Grumman Corporation the manufacturer of the lunar module that brought Armstrong and Aldrin to the moon. Johnston witnessed remarkable events during his time at NASA, which eventually compelled him to break his silence after retiring from active duty. His disclosures were truly astonishing. Among other things, Johnston claimed that he had access to a vast collection of photos and data revealing anomalies and unusual structures on the moon. According to Johnston, these images provided clear evidence of artificial constructs on the lunar surface. Some even speculated that these images constituted proof of extraterrestrial presence or activity on the moon. Moreover, Johnston witnessed how NASA deliberately withheld these images and information, manipulating the photos released to the public to conceal these anomalies. In a bold move, Johnston managed to save some of the original photos and negatives that were slated for destruction preserving them for future generations. However, Johnston's revelations went beyond the mere existence of artificial structures. He spoke of secret space programs and alleged agreements between the U.S. government and extraterrestrial races. One such agreement, often referred to as the Edwards Agreement for the Preservation of Humanity, supposedly took place on February 20, 1954, between President Dwight Eisenhower and a race known as the Greys, some sources even claim that the U.S. president at the time granted the Greys permission to regularly abduct and examine individuals on the condition that they would be safely returned with their memories erased. There have been countless reports of worldwide abductions that share similar details, consistently involving small gray aliens taking people aboard their spaceships. Sadly, many victims are deeply traumatized by these encounters and struggle to find belief and support from others. These reports indicate that the Greys do not always adhere to the agreed-upon terms, or that some individuals may be immune to memory erasure. Allegedly, Eisenhower also shared technology with the aliens and permitted two of their ambassadors, known as Krill and J-Rod, to reside permanently on Earth. Krill is described as a reptilian creature from the Dragon constellation, while J-Rod is said to be a Grey from Zeta Reticuli. Following his time at NASA, Dr. Ken Johnston Sneer delved into the study of parascience and pre-astronautics, driven by his experiences and the wealth of information he had encountered. Like many others, he found clues in Sumerian writings and the rumors surrounding extraterrestrial involvement in the foundation of ancient Egyptian civilization. To Johnston, all these pieces formed a coherent picture leading him to believe that the moon may have been inhabited by ancient civilizations or extraterrestrial beings. Another controversial event that fueled speculation was the alleged crash of a UFO in Roswell in 1947. Numerous witnesses claimed to have seen a spaceship and encountered a gray alien. Taking advantage of his connections and opportunities, Johnston investigated this phenomenon as well. His research led him to conclude that the Roswell crash marked the beginning of contact between the U.S. government and the Greys. According to accounts, the U.S. government established communication with the Greys in 1951, ultimately culminating in the mysterious treaty in 1954. It is rumored that President Eisenhower, during a secret visit to Edwards Air Force Base, met with the Greys. 
Officially, it was stated that he required emergency dental treatment while on vacation in Palm Springs, California. However, internal reports from NASA and the U.S. military allegedly revealed that contact with the Greys resulted in psychological issues for many soldiers present at the meeting. These otherworldly beings seem to have a profoundly negative impact on humans, leading to depression, anxiety, and even serious behavioral problems that tragically led to suicide in some cases. William Cooper, a former naval intelligence officer and whistleblower, shared his testimonies, which included references to two alien races, the friendly Nordics and the cunning Greys. According to Cooper, the Nordics assisted in negotiating a non-aggression pact between humanity and the Greys, which allowed the latter to conduct regular abductions for medical purposes. Naturally, these theories and claims remain highly contentious, with no official statements from NASA or the U.S. government. If anyone does comment on these allegations, they are promptly denied. What did Michael Collins experience while on the moon? Michael Collins, despite not being widely recognized, had an impressive career and professional life. He excelled as both a test pilot and an astronaut. Born in Rome, Italy, he grew up in a military family, as his father served as a United States military officer. This led to Collins moving frequently and living in various countries during his childhood. He attended St. Albans School in Washington, where his passion for aviation and astronomy took flight. In 1952, Collins graduated from the prestigious West Point Military Academy and made the decision to join the Air Force. He became a skilled fighter pilot and flew missions during the Korean War. Later on, Collins attended the renowned Air Force Test Pilot School at Edwards Air Force Base in California. This was where he tested a wide range of aircraft, including fighter jets and bombers. In 1963, NASA selected Michael Collins as one of the astronauts for the Gemini and Apollo programs. These programs aimed to achieve manned orbital flights and lunar landings. Collins underwent extensive training for these missions alongside astronaut Buzz Aldrin. In 1966, Collins embarked on his first space flight as the pilot of Gemini 10, alongside astronaut John Young. During this mission, they performed two rendezvous with other spacecraft, and Collins conducted two spacewalks. Originally slated to be part of the Apollo 8 mission, Collins had to undergo surgery, which prevented him from participating. However, fortune smiled upon him as he was later reassigned to the historic Apollo 11 mission. This turned out to be a remarkable stroke of luck because Collins got the chance to be part of the crew that would make the first ever manned lunar landing an extraordinary achievement. In the Apollo 11 mission, Collins served as the command module pilot. Although this role may have placed him in the background, it was by no means less significant than the others. As the pilot, Collins had the crucial responsibility of guiding and maintaining the command module Columbia, which served as the mothership for the mission. While Armstrong and Aldrin explored the moon's surface, Collins piloted the lunar module. Collins's responsibilities extended beyond the mechanical tasks. He served as the main communication link between the crew and mission control back on Earth. While Armstrong and Aldrin explored the moon's surface in the lunar rover, Collins ensured that all photographs and lunar observations were relayed to mission control in real time. These observations provided valuable information about the moon's composition and were instrumental in advancing our understanding of the lunar terrain. One aspect of Collins's duties carried a weight that surpassed all others. As the intermediary between the crew on the moon and mission control on Earth, he recognized that if any unforeseen circumstances arose during the mission, he would be required to make the journey back to Earth alone. Despite this realization, Collins carried out his duties with remarkable composure and unwavering dedication. He remained focused on ensuring that mission control received information promptly and steadily. Collins's precision and professionalism contributed significantly to the successful completion of the Apollo 11 mission. He holds the distinction of being the first person to experience the profound solitude of the moon's far side. For Collins, these moments were ones of tranquility as he floated in space, gazing at Earth from a unique perspective. The silence of the void allowed him to see our planet with fresh eyes and appreciate its breathtaking beauty. 
Interestingly, during his time in space, Collins observed some peculiar signals that seemed to originate from sources beyond our world. These signals left a lasting impression on him. He meticulously documented them and handed his findings to NASA officials, who have kept the information under wraps for over five decades. It remains a fascinating mystery to this day. Following his remarkable journey to the moon, Collins continued to contribute to society. He later served as a U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for Public Affairs, utilizing his experiences and insights to serve his country in a different capacity. But everything changed when Ingo Douglas Swan published his book, Documenting Experiences with Aliens on the Moon. Ingo Swan saw the aliens on the moon. In 1998, Ingo Swan released his book titled Penetration, in which he claimed to be a psychic employed by the CIA. Swan asserted that his role was to remote view the dark side of the moon, specifically to investigate the possibility of alien presence. Initially, these claims sounded like science fiction. However, in 2006, when the CIA began releasing documents related to the Stargate project, Swan's participation in the program was confirmed. When asked about the existence of extraterrestrials, Swan not only affirmed their presence but also stated that they were already here. He further elaborated that these beings were engaged in the construction of something on the far side of the moon. According to Swan, these aliens were not friendly in nature. Ingo Swan, considered one of the best scientific mediums of the last century, had official affiliations with the FBI, NASA, and scientists in the USA. He employed a technique called remote viewing, along with his special clairvoyant talent, to direct his gaze to distant planets, sometimes millions of kilometers away. Swan gained absolute credibility in the early 1970s when he scanned Jupiter for scientists at Stanford University in California, and his predictions were later confirmed by NASA probes. In the mid-1970s, the FBI approached Swan to participate in a project that eventually became known as the Stargate Project. His task was to use remote viewing to explore various areas of the moon. After focusing on a few harmless targets, Swan suddenly witnessed dome-like dwellings, other buildings, and strange creatures engaged in what he spontaneously recognized as mining activities within a lunar crater. These beings quickly recognized Swan's clairvoyant abilities, which led the FBI to terminate the experiment immediately. Forced to remain silent for 10 years, Swan later published several best-selling books on the subject. Shockingly, Swan claimed that the race he encountered on the moon was not friendly. Despite initial denials based on the belief that the moon only consisted of dust and rocks, there is now substantial evidence and supposed proof suggesting that aliens have been mining on the moon for a long time. Furthermore, Scientists discovered something on the moon that may soon compel humanity to develop the moon industrially. Helium-3, a rare isotope ideal for nuclear fusion, was detected in lunar rock. If we had access to this mineral for nuclear fusion, it would greatly contribute to solving our energy and environmental problems. Fusion energy is highly productive and clean, leaving hardly any residue, which is very different from the nuclear fusion methods we currently employ. Now that the question of what the aliens were seeking on the moon has been answered, the remaining question is what will happen if NASA and SpaceX send humans to the moon for extended periods? Could there be undisclosed contracts or agreements? The moon is large enough to accommodate various activities that often go unnoticed. It's important to consider the moon's size. It is almost half the size of Earth, providing ample surface area and space for different parties to coexist without interference. Elon Musk has expressed his desire to send humans to the moon for years, but missions have faced constant delays. NASA, which had halted its efforts to send humans to the moon long ago, initiated the Artemis project in collaboration with SpaceX. The aim is to establish a permanent colony. If aliens still reside on the moon, it is reasonable to assume that there are undisclosed agreements between governments and these extraterrestrial races to avoid any potential conflicts. Space agencies are unlikely to land their probes and robots in areas where aliens are present, and the Artemis station will likely be constructed in a different region, free from alien presence. The future reports and experiences of lunar explorers will undoubtedly shed more light on this subject. 
Speculation suggests that NASA may enforce lifelong confidentiality for participants in their missions. However, what about SpaceX and Elon Musk? Would they also be part of this alleged conspiracy withholding the truth from the public? Only time will reveal the answers to these intriguing questions. Thanks for exploring with us. If you enjoyed these revelations, click now on the next video that pops up on your screen. It's unbelievable.